Hey, it's Anfa. So you've just installed Manjaro and you're wondering how can you set it up to be a music production system. Well, today I'm going to show you how do I do that. I have a fresh Manjaro installation and we're going to go through the process of configuring the system, installing all necessary packages, making sure it works good, and then installing all the software that you might need for music production, uh, all the DAWs or the plugins and that sort of thing. And I'm going to show you where to get this and how to install it, how to later update it, etc. So you've just logged in for the first time into your new system and uh, there's a few things I want to do. The first thing might be a little bit uh, strange to you, but the first thing I ever do is configure backups. So let's open a program called TimeShift. Oh, it's not installed. So we have to install TimeShift. Now, something I really like about Manjaro is that it has a drop-down terminal installed by default. So if you just press F12, you get this terminal. Uh, you can press Shift and Alt and arrow keys, right arrow key and down arrow key to make it bigger. And I usually like to have it uh, much bigger. We can also make the font bigger if we just use Ctrl and my mouse wheel. And this is going to be much easier to, to follow, I hope. Alrighty, so um, we need to install TimeShift. So, but uh, first we need to update our package list. So pacman, which is the package manager, dash S and Y. This will going to um, uh, update all the package information. But of course we need to use sudo. So sudo and I can now type two exclamation points and that's going to execute the previous command with sudo prefix. So that's going to execute sudo pacman s y. Now I'm going to type in my temporary password which is 1234 and let's let it run and everything is up to date. Great, now we can install time shift. So I'm going to go sudo pacman minus dash s time shift. This is going to install a package called time shift and all its dependencies. Proceed with installation. I just press enter and it's a default. Yes. It's going to download some packages and time shift is installed. Now I can press F12 to hide the terminal. We can also close this hello dialog. Now I can open my main menu and type time and you see there is time shift, a system restore utility. Now we need to give it our administration password that you've set during installation. And during first run, time shift is going to ask you to configure how it's going to do its job. Now, if you have installed your system using ext4 file system, you're going to have to use rsync, which is the default option. This is simpler, and um, but it takes longer to do. I have installed Manjaro using Manjaro Architect, and I've installed it on a BTRFS file system, so I can use the very fast snapshot functionality of BTRFS to create and restore these snapshots nearly instantly. So I'm going to select BTRFS. You can also open Help and read up about them. Now we have to choose the file system we're going to store the backups on. We have one file system present in this in this laptop. It's the main file system, so we don't have to do anything. Now we can configure a snapshot schedule. By default, TimeShift is going to do five daily backups. I'm going to disable that because I want to be using TimeShift only to do manual snapshots when I'm before upgrading my system. Let's go next. Um, this let's leave this enabled. And now we can include the user home directory. What this means is everything in our home user directory will also be included in the snapshot. That means our documents. I want to use TimeShift only to store the system state. So 
I want to leave this off. But if you want to also include your documents, projects and everything, you can click this and it will back up everything. Let's press next and the setup is complete. I can now click finish and let's create our first snapshot. What you got to do is just click create. Now on BTRFS, this takes no time at all. If you want to delete a snapshot, just use this delete button. If we want to roll back to that snapshot, we just press restore. It's as simple as that. We can also browse the selected snapshot files to retreat something that was previously on our disk, but is not, isn't there anymore. Okay, this video is not about time shift. Let's get going. Now, I want to make sure Octopi is installed. And you can see it is. But in some previous versions of Manjaro, it was not installed by default. So if you would like to install Octopi, you would go to your terminal window and we can clear it. And you can type sudo pacman s octopi. Give it your administration password. And indeed, there is an update to be installed for that program. Let's go ahead and do that. All right. What actually we want to do is update the system in its entirety. So I'm going to clear the, the terminal and I'm going to run sudo pacman dash big S, small y and small u. This command will update our system, basically check if there is anything to update and it will update everything. This is an important thing on Manjaro, which is based on Arch Linux, as Arch Linux is a rolling release distribution. That means there are no frozen states like with Ubuntu's, you know, different releases like 14.04 or 19.09 or what? 1909? No. And then you update packages for the versions supported by this version of the system. No. On Arch-based Linux distributions like Manjaro, you are always on the bleeding edge. So you often will be required to update all your system packages. Now, there is not much to update because I have actually updated it during installation. Another tool we're going to need to install extra software is called YAY. YAY! And it's going to give us access to so-called Arch user repository, which is a collection of user-created PK builds. These are scripts that get sources or binary packages from the internet and either build these sources or build packages from the binary files and install them to your system. There is pretty much everything you could ever imagine or want in the Arch user repository. So we're going to need that for some really bleeding edge versions of our software or plugins that are not in the usual repositories. So let's go sudo pacman s yay. Now you can see that I already had yay installed and that's because I have chosen to have it installed during installation when I used Manjaro Architect. But if you do a regular installation for the graphical installation program, you're not going to have that option. So you will need to install YAI yourself. The next thing we need to take care of is the Jack Audio Server. It's pretty much the workhorse that's going to hold all our audio work together. So let's just uh, see if we have Jack installed. Let's go which Jack D. And you can see we have Jack installed, but we want to make sure it's the correct version. So I'm going to just make sure that Jack 2 is installed. I don't use Jack 1 because Jack 1 is not multi-threaded and modern computers have at least two cores. So it's a shame not to use them for your DSP. From what I see here, Jack 1 doesn't have any cool features at all. <coughs> Let's go sudo pacman s jack Two. And now you can see we have Jack installed. So by default, Manjaro has supplied it with Jack 1, but we want Jack 2. Do you want to remove Jack? I do. So we want to replace Jack 1 with Jack 2. Yes. Now, this is a very important step because if I have gone and installed other software depending on the Jack, replacing that package later would be quite problematic because I would have to uninstall all the software that needs Jack Audio Server, 
then I could remove the Jack 1 package and then install Jack 2 and I would have to reinstall again all the software I installed on top of that. Now we are sure we are running Jack 2 so we can go ahead and install other things. And the other thing I'm going to install is Cadence. sudo pacman s cadence. Cadence is basically a control panel for production audio work. Okay, we have Cadence installed. Let's hide our terminal and let's find it. Cadence. Yes, it's a Jack toolbox. Let's open Cadence. And we can see we have a yellow sign here which says we have a non-real-time kernel and we, the user is an audio group. We're going to check that soon. Let's see what we can do in the configuration. The driver, we want to use ALSA. And yes, this is the analog interface. Okay, fine. And we need to use real-time priority indeed. To up our um, performance, we can move the real-time priority up. And now if we try to do that, The Jack server is started. But I'm going to stop it for now and first make sure we have other things configured properly. So a one important thing for using Jack and Jack dependent applications like Ardor is to make sure that your user is allowed to use real-time scheduling in the system. And this is done with the use of so-called audio group. So we can type in a command called groups and that's going to show us what user groups our user is in. And we can see it is actually in the audio group. But we need to make sure that the audio group is properly configured so that it has the privilege to use the real-time scheduling that the Jack server needs. To do that, I'm going to go to a directory called etc security. I'm going to list the files in there and you can see there is limits conf and limits.d. This is a monolithic configuration file and this is a directory con containing smaller files which can be which are concatenated to produce the complete configuration. I'm going to go into the limits.d directory and list what's there. You can see there is something let's um, let's type less and 10 and see what it is there. Users memlock 2024. Okay, there is nothing here. Let's go up. Let's now type nano limits.conf. And I need to prefix that command with sudo. So this is run as administrator. Nano is a text editor. And limits.conf is the file we want to edit. And that's the contents of the file. Now let's see if the audio group is mentioned here. Let's press Ctrl W, which stands for where, and now I can type audio. Audio is not found. That means our audio group is created in the system and our user has been added to it, but it doesn't really have the privileges that we need. So let's go down to the end of the file and specify the privileges for the audio group. Let's type a hash which starts a uh, a commented line and this is going to be ignored and now I'm going to type at audio which means the uh, name of the gr user group tab I'm going to use two tabs just to align with the, what is above the type is nothing the item is RT prio which means real-time priority now I'm gonna allow it 95 And let's also add another line. Let's call it audio again, tap, tap. And this is memlock unlimited. This is another privilege for the Jack server to use more memory in your system. 
I've taken this text from a website, jackaudio.org, and there's a frequently asked questions section where you can find exactly how to configure this. So, yeah, uh, if you need to look it up. And you probably will need to look it up. Now we need to save the configuration file. I'm going to press Ctrl O for out or write out limits.conf, enter. It wrote 54 lines. Great. Now I'm going to press Ctrl X to exit. We can verify that the file was changed by typing less limits.conf. And this is a file viewer. We can press page down. And indeed, there is our audio group privileges specified. Let's press Q to quit this less program. Now, for this to take effect, we need to log out and log back in. So, um, let's do that. Okay, I'm logging back in. Now oh, we have Cadence opened and we can start. All right. Now, if there was no audio group in our system, we can create it by typing sudo group add audio. Now we need to type in our administration password. It's going to tell us that the audio group already exists. But if it wouldn't exist, we would have created it just now. Now we would have to also add our user to the audio group. And we can do this with the command user mod dash a dash big G, which means add to a group audio. And now we can type our username minus alpha, but you can also type dollar sign and with big letters user. And this text will be substituted with whatever is the username. Of course, I need to prefix this with sudo. Or afterwards, type sudo and two exclamation points, and this will uh, execute the command. Now I have sh now I should have done this before configuring the audio group because otherwise that configuration would have not made any sense. And then log out, log back in, and it would take effect. To verify, let's type in groups, and indeed we are in the audio group. We can make it a bit easier by typing groups pipe grep, which is a program to search for text, audio. And it highlights the audio group in red for us to make it easier to spot. Our user is in the audio group. Our audio group is configured, so we should be able to run Ardor just fine. Let's install it. Now, Maybe I'm going to use Octopi to do so. So far, I've been installing everything using the terminal, but you might prefer to use the graphical user interface. I'm going to type in Ardor. Right click, install. And it asks us to install optional packages. XJDO is an XJack video viewer. It's a very useful viewer for um, working with film soundtracks or editing or making sound effects for pilot footage or whatever. I'm going to install both of these. Now let's commit these changes or apply these changes. Now I need to, of course, give my administration password and it's going to install Ardor for us. And Ardor is installed. So let's run it. Ardor. Welcome to Ardor. I'm going to put everything in default places and I'm going to change this later. Let's scan for plugins. There's not going to be much plugins because we haven't installed any. Let's create an empty session. Ardor test my favorite name. Let's change the audio system to Jack, which is already running because we have started it with Cadence and we can connect to it. 
Now, if we wouldn't have the audio group and the audio group privileges properly configured, Ardor would not be able to create the session. It would give us an error and say that uh, it cannot open the, the session file or, or whatever. It's a misleading error message. And what it really means is that it couldn't obtain the real-time scheduling privileges. Now we can pin the Ardor icon to the task manager. It will let us open it up more quickly. You can also right click to start a new instance if you want to open two Ardor instances for some reason. We can create a new track, Control shift n Let's make a stereo audio track. And this is already capturing audio from the built-in microphone. Let's see if it works. It does. Mm, All righty, it works. Now let's install more software. I'm going to save this. Let's go back to Octopi. And now, do you remember I have told you we uh, installed this program called Yay? Now if we go to Tools, Options, and AUR, you can see we have Yay selected as a as a program to interface with the Arch user repository. You may have this deselected, so make sure you select Yay here. We can also enable AUR voting if you created an account on our aur.archlinux.org. I know I have. So now I can vote on packages. You can select no confirm and no edit to make it easier for you to go through the installation process. This will disable the option to change anything in the PK build script, but it will also not ask you as many questions and it's just gonna be smoother. Let's apply these settings. And now I'm gonna install Zinfusion. First thing, I have to click on this alien face to enable the yay tool so we're going to search the arch user repository instead of the regular arch linux or manjaro linux packages so i'm going to type in zen and press enter and we have zen fusion here let's right click and you can see i have already voted on this package let's install it and now Octopi opens up an, a terminal emulator and runs the yay command with parameters of our package. It's going to ask us a password. I'm going to give it the password. And you see it shows the question, proceed with installation, and it automatically answered yes, because we have selected the no confirm option. This is right now downloading all the source code for Zenfusion and it's going to compile it on the spot and install the package for us so we can use it. This is going to take a short while because Zenfusion is quite a big program. Now as this installation is going on I'm gonna tell you something about Pulse Audio. Pulse Audio and Jack uh, are a cause of many headaches for many people using uh, Linux for audio production because both Pulse Audio and Jack are sound servers and they tend to not cooperate very well. But there is a very easy way to deal with that and that is just to install a Jack module for Pulse Audio. Then Pulse Audio will be able to use Jack as its audio backend instead of trying to use your sound card directly. Two knights are fighting for the attention of Princess Alsa. The nimble Jack and the well-known Pulse Audio. But for the kingdom to blossom, we need Jack to pass the letters between Alsa and Pulse Audio, as any other way around will cause a disruption. What the f that? did I just make up? Unless all of that can be handled by Pipewire, but that's a topic for another video. That means you will be able to play videos from your web browser and run Ardor at the same time without having to stop one or the other. And you can also then record videos from the web browser 
into your other session because Pulse Audio will expose its audio ports to the Jack server. And Cadence makes this easier. You can see we have this Pulse Audio tab right here and we have information about the Pulse Audio server. You can see that Pulse Audio is started and bridged to Jack. That's good news because that means we already have Pulse Audio configured to talk to Jack. You can go to Tools, open Katya, which is a Jack patch bay, and we can see what is happening in our system right now. This is a graph of Jack clients and connections. The system nodes show the built-in sound card that we're using for our Jack server. And you see we have Pulse Audio Jack Sync, which is the Pulse Audio output. So whatever you play in your web browser, for example, is going to feed it there its audio here and right into our speakers. And here is Pulse Audio Jack Source. Whatever you're gonna, if you're gonna talk to someone using a, a web application in your browser, this is going to get the sound from your microphone. And here is the stereo microphone built into the laptop. But with the power of Jack, you can reroute that wherever you want. For example, you can feed output of your ardor session to Pulse Audio. So you can, for example, process your voice with ardor and make people hear you with your voice changed or with reverb added or whatever. I'm going to reset that to the previous state. Do not leave it in a mess. So Katya is a tool shipped with Cadence. There is another tool called Claudia, which is a front end for Laddish uh, session man manager. There are also level meters. This one shows the microphone input and this is an out meter and I think it's working because we have this thing here yes let's see how the installation is going and we're still cloning uh, now we are copying the uh, downloading the source files for mrabi zest framework which is the GUI framework that Mark McCree have created for Zenfusion Normally this is much faster, but I'm recording the video and that slows everything down. Another thing we can talk about is using real-time kernels. Now with Manjaro, installing a new kernel is very, very easy. You just open your main menu and type kernel and there is this tool for installing different kernels. And here are all the available kernels. You can see we are currently running kernel version 5.4.18-1, which is a long time supported kernel. It's installed and it's running. But there is a newer kernel, but there is a different kernel, and it's a real time kernel. So a real time kernel might give us um, better performance for Jack Audio Server. However, I have not found a significant change difference in my workload. But if we were to install it, we would just click here. Click yes. Give our password. And we can show details. And it's going to download all the packages and install the real-time kernel for us. Of course, to use this new kernel, we need to reboot our machine. And you can verify what kernel are you running either by opening this Manjaro kernel manager or by opening a terminal, hit F12 for example, and type a command called uname-a. And this tells us we're running Linux, this is the name of the computer, and this is the version of the kernel. This is a preemptive kernel, so it allows real-time scheduling, but it's not like uh, super full support. And our new kernel is installed. You can see it's now installed. If we reboot our computer, you will have a menu where we can choose which kernel we want to boot. Once we're done with installing all the packages, I will reboot 
and we will choose this real-time kernel and once we confirm that it works then we will remove the other one so we don't have this option and the boot process will be simpler let's check back and we'll still cloning by the way a very important command on linux is sudo make coffee Just joking. Okay, now we have to give our password. One thing I don't like about Yay is that it can time out with the password and I need to install it again. Thankfully, it caches the results, so it's not a big problem. And we have Zenfusion installed. Let's try it in Ardor. I'm gonna press Shift E to open up the side terminal. By the way, I think we should change the font size of Ardor. Oh, there it is. Yep, that looks much better. Not all fonts will be updated immediately, so we should restart Ardor to, for this to take full effect. And I'm going to press Ctrl Shift N and add a new track. Let's make it a MIDI track. And you can see we don't have Zenfusion on this list. What we have to do is go to Edit Preferences plugins and go scan for plugins and you can see we have it's detecting it's have it has detected Zenat sub effects so now if I go Control shift n and add a new MIDI track I have Zenat sub effects on the list I'm gonna pick LV2 version let's call this Zen fusion for some reason it didn't add the plugin here okay let's do it Zen and sub effects. Oh, it failed. What the fuck? <laughs> okay. All right, so now we can Control Shift N, create a new MIDI track. Okay, let's press Control Shift N to create a new MIDI track and I'm going to choose Zenfusion VST. Let's call this Zenfusion. It's called Zen Sub Effects, but with the new interface, it is Zenfusion. And there we have it. And it works. I'm going to install more software that I use and I need. Let's go install Surge. And there is Surge Synthesizer. We can install the binary version. It's going to be faster because it's not going to have to compile everything. So if you read the output, you can see that it's downloaded a Debian package right here. It's extracted it and it's created an Arch package from that. Now it's compressing this package so it can be installed. So Arch user repository is using various means to mm, pull in different software so it can be installed on Arch Linux based operating systems like Manjaro. Now it's installing the package and it's installed. If we now go into edit preferences and scan for plugins, you can see it has found the Surge plugin. And we can create a new MIDI track, call it Surge. And we can select Surge from the drop-down menu. And of course it doesn't Devil! work. Hey, it's Anfa and it's uh, eight days later. I have actually used this laptop with Ardor 6 that we installed during this video that you'll see. And I recorded a gig and everything went perfectly. Uh, and right now I just went back to check this Ardor 5 problem with LV2 plugins and I removed Ardor 6 and installed Ardor 5 again and it works. It works. So I think that must have been some error in the Arch unofficial Ardor build and that it's already fixed. Okay, let's install a bunch of plugins that I use all the time. I use Calf plugins. They are very important. 
I also use LSP plugins. Tap plugins. Maybe an easier way to do this would be to go to the Pro Audio group of packages. And here we have a lot of stuff that you might want to install. For example, Audacity, yep, Calf Caps, also Carla, the plugin host, um, Distro plugin framework, Dragonfly Reverb, of course, Abumeter, yes, Drum Gizmo, oh yes. EQ10Q, certainly. Geon Kick, oh yes. Guitarix, for sure. Helm, yeah. IRLV2, you could also might want to install Jack Capture or something else. I don't like Linux Sampler at all. Liquid SFZ, I've heard it's a nice plugin. LSP plugins, yeah. MDA LV2, uh, yeah, these are some good plugins, though I had problems with them. Ninja 2 is a nice uh, drum loop slicer. Noise Repellent is an excellent real-time denoising plugin. Actually, two plugins. One is using neural networks. Okay, I'm looking through anything else I might need or want. Sample V1 is a very useful sampler. Set B3 is an excellent uh, Hammond organ emulator. Sherlock LV2 is a great plugin for uh, reading what's going on in your MIDI stream. Uh, Sonic Visualizer is a very useful program for, well, visualizing audio file contents. SWH plugins are useful too. Tap plugins, sure. Wolf Shaper, oh yes. Uh, Wolf Spectrum too. X42 plugins are very useful. These are excellent uh, audio metering plugins. Zam plugins are great. Zeta Audio Jack Bridge is very nice. Uh, it's a tool for bridging ALS applications to Jack. Zeta NG Bridge is a network Jack application to send Jack audio over network. I've made a video about that. And there's Zeta Rev 1, which is the very well sounding reverb. And now to, to install them, I right click somewhere and then go install. It asks me to install Jack. I don't want to because that's optional. And I also have Jack already. Project M is a music visualizer. I don't need a visualizer plugin. And it should now list all the packages I want to install. Do we have everything? I think we have everything we need. Let's do it. Of course, you need to give it your password. And now we just wait. In the meantime, I'm going to close this Ardor session so the user interface can reload with the changed font size. <clears throat> now we've mostly installed software that is present in the regular Manjaro or Arch Linux repositories, but we can also search plugins that are in the Arch user repository Sometimes these are newer versions of the plugins. I'm always amazed how fast Arch Linux Packaging Manager works. On Debian, it's like 10 times slower. I got used to how slow it was. It's already installed. All right, now we can just go Edit, Preferences, Plugins, Scan for Plugins. Now that's gonna take a while. Okay, yeah, now this is unlocked. I can enable the AUR search. What is there that is not in the usual repositories? <laughs> I don't know, I'm gonna search for LV2. Oh, Bitrot. Bitrot are very useful plugins that are unfortunately not very popular. We can install Bitrot plugins. Let's do that. It's going to download the sources off of GitHub and build them for us. These are very small, so it shouldn't take long. I very like the Bitrot Repeat plugin, which is very good for creating glitchy effects and you can very well automate it in Ardor. I like to use it on drum lines, especially, so you can have like... Oh, Invada Studio plugins. Invada Studio plugins will be too. Yay! Invada are also some great plugins. Oh, I need to give my password. Okay. 
BitTrot is installed. We can install the Invada plugins. It has 44 votes. People like these. Let's see how Ardor is going. Okay, it's scanned everything. It has all the new plugins detected. Now we have a lot of plugins. Let's go EQ10Q. I use these a lot, so I'm going to add these two to my favorites. I think there's something wrong with our, this Ardor installation. It can't load any LV2 plugins. That's no good. Uh, usually it just works, so uh, it kind of sucks. And I really wished something like that wouldn't go wrong when I'm making a video. But we have our Invada Studio plugins installed. You know what I'm going to do? I'm going to install Ardor 6.0 and hope it's going to work a bit better. So, note that I'm searching in AUBAR and we have ardor-git. Let's right-click and install. It would like to ask us to remove ardor first because this, these two are, are conflicting. If I were to edit the pkbuild file script, we could install both alongside, but let's not do that. So I'm going to just remove ardor. It's already removed. Now let's go back to the AUR search and I'm going to install ardor-git. You can see that our ardor desktop uh, or ardor icon here is no longer pointing to anything. I'm going to unpin it because ardor 6 is probably going to add a different icon. We can also run Carla, the nonlinear plugin host. And we can add a plugin. Let's see if the LV2 plugins work in Carla. Let's go with uh, Invada. I can go with special filters and let's just enable LV2 plugins. Nothing else. Invada, early reflections, reverb. Mm, it loaded. And here is the user interface. I really like this early reflection reverb plugin because it, you know, it, it has this uh, three-dimensional visualization of a room and you can place your source and your listener. And you can see the impulse response being generated on the fly and, and visualized. I've used this a lot in the Latspa version and LMMS. Okay, so uh, LV2 plugins work in Carla, so that's some problem with uh, Ardor. So we are not installing official Ardor builds, so we can't complain to Ardor developers because the official builds probably work. Let's open Surge LV2 here. And it works. Let's make it bigger. Yep, just like it should. All right, so Ardor 6 is installed. Let's see if it works. Ardor 6 has discovered configuration from Ardor 5. Would you like to, these files to be copied and used for Ardor 6? Yeah, sure. Your configurations file will copy. You, will now, you now can restart Ardor. Okay. I don't know why this uh, Git version has this weird icon. Welcome to this pre-release build of Ardor 6.0 pre-03504. Yes, I know, don't use it for production. Let's create a new session. Ardor 6 test. The main thing I want to know if, is if this version of Ardor is going to work with LV2 plugins, because that's quite important. And I have no idea why the Ardor 5 version didn't work. And let's see if Ardor 6 works with LV2 plugins, because Ardor 5 didn't want to. Control shift n let's create a new MIDI track and insert maybe Zen and SubFX. Let's call this Zin. And here it is. I'm not sure if this is the LV2 plugin or the VST one. Let's add a new track. Let's call it MIDI track. Let's make a no plugin at all. And let's insert the plugin manually. So plugin manager. 
And here we should be able to filter by type. So LV2. Okay, let's uh, show instruments only. Show all formats. I want just LV2. Okay, so we have LV2 instruments. Let's try Geon Kick. Mm. Okay, so LV2 plugins work in this Ardor 6 build. That's good. It took a while to install because this laptop is not the most powerful one. It just has four cores. Uh, but it did it. All right, so we have a working workstation to do things. Now, if we wouldn't have the Pulse Audio Jack module, Pulse Audio wouldn't cooperate with Jack. So let's try and find it in the package manager in case you need to install it. We can also install VCV Rack. So in AUR, we have VCV Rack. We can install the bin binary package so we don't have to build it from source. Okay, that that works. And you can see we have VCV Rack here. We can change the audio backend to Jack. And we can uh, make it feed into the system output. But now we can intercept that. We can clean these and use these outputs here. And now we can record. Uh, don't pay attention to the X runs. This laptop is under heavy load. We have recorded audio from VCV Rack into Ardor. Now, the very last thing we can do to try and improve our jack performance is to install a real-time kernel. So, as like I said before, we can go here, type kernel, and we're going to have this thing opened. Now, we have installed the real-time kernel, but we are still running the non-real-time kernel. So, I will now reboot this machine. Uh, I like to just press F12 and type reboot. Oh, by the way, before we do that, we can create a time shift snapshot. And we can do it in two ways. I'm going to show you the graphical user interface way. So we open up time shift, we give it our administrator password or root password. And we can click here to create a new snapshot. But I also want to show you how to do the same from the command line. So I go sudo time shift. And if you run this command, it's going to show you all the help text to tell you what you can do with time shift. Basically, we're going to use the create option with comments. So let me clear the terminal and I'm going to go su time shift create and then comments. And now I'm going to type after installing all the software. I'm going to press enter and then it's created a BTRFS snapshot. Now, if I run time shift, note shit, time shift list. Oh, sorry, I need to use sudo. You can see we have two snapshots. This was our first one and this is the second one. I'm going to close this terminal and I'm going to open the graphical user interface. And you can see we have the same thing here and we can double click here to type comment. And this is going to be our initial snapshot. Snapshot. So it's nice and we know what is what and why these are here. You can see that our size has changed to 4.6 gigabytes. So there's quite a lot of things changed in our uh, in our system partition or file system. Alrighty, I am going to now reboot the computer. So I'm gonna go, and you can do it from the main menu, here, leave, and press restart, or be cool like I am and just type reboot. What I'm gonna do now is press shift to open the grub menu, but it doesn't. Okay, okay I think we need to change the configuration of grub so let's go sudo 
nano etc default grub dot yeah grub let's give it the password and here it is grub timeout style uncomment this line if you want to enable to save default function comment this following line and set group default to saved okay group default is set to saved but this was disabled and i'm gonna allow the generation of recovery boot modes because that's useful sometimes uh, okay i'm gonna save this file and go update grub now i need to of course give it sudo and it should use this to remake the configuration files now if we reboot i think we should be good so i'm gonna smash the shift key anyway give me the group menu group 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 oh yeah we have the menu now we've got the group group menu and the absolutely amazing thing about TimeShift and BTRFS is that now we have Arch Linux snapshots. And you can see we have the snapshots that we've created. So we can basically boot right into an older version of our operating system. If we messed something up, we can just select a different snapshot right here. For example, if we removed a working kernel and we don't have anything to boot, we can just go here and boot an old version. And this is something really amazing about BTRFS and timeshift snapshots. Now we can go for advanced options for Manjaro Linux and here we can choose the kernel. So Manjaro Linux kernel 5.4 is the default one and we're gonna go for 5.4.13 real time. And I'm gonna press enter and boot this one. Now, every time I boot into BTRFS, I get this error and it really doesn't mean anything. You don't have to press any keys. It's going to disappear really soon. Okay, so we have logged in. Let's open the kernel dialog, see what we've got. And yes, we are running the real-time kernel. Well, I hope you found this video to be useful. Uh, thanks for watching. And... Uh, all the good luck with installing your own Manjaro system and configuring it for audio work. It's not that hard. Many things that I've shown you are kind of like double checking that it's correctly installed. Um, now your the mileage may, may vary. You know, every version of uh, this, the Manjaro ISO that you can download is going to be slightly different. Uh, and also if you install using the Manjaro Architect or the graphical uh, program, it's going to give you different results. But overall, it's really not that bad. Um, yeah, so thanks for watching. I hope you've learned something. And uh, also, big thanks to all the fine people who are supporting my work on Patreon and Liberate. If you would like to join them and help keep this show going, please go to patreon.com slash anfa or liberapay.com slash anfa. Now go, install Manjaro and make some music. Hey, I'd like to apologize because this video has taken way too long to finish. Wait a minute. How do I undo this? All right, so I'd like to apologize because this video has taken way too long to finish. However, midway through the editing, all the video editing open source help broke loose and I had to abandon Olive altogether because it became so unstable I was unable to proceed. And I had to go back to Kaden Live, which also isn't working great and it's just crashing and hanging and... So it was a real hell to finish this video, but I done it! Uh, yeah. So I hope you'll enjoy it. 
I, I really hope it's gonna be worth it. Please enjoy the video. Okay, bye.